Hello and uh, welcome to another playbook. This one is on metrics. Uh, this is a question that's asked to me a lot. What essentially are the kind of metrics we should be looking for when we are building our products? Uh, so I thought I'd put it all together in a quick video. Uh, the focus of this video would also be specifically towards retention and engagement metrics, probably the most important metrics in your product. Uh, but we'll define a whole bunch of different types of uh, metrics as well. And uh, hopefully you'll find some use for this. Uh, a lot of examples I might be using are from the world of consumer products, but uh, the metrics themselves are very applicable, whether you're building a B2B product or a SaaS product or an enterprise product. The metrics uh, will be very useful across the board. So let's jump in. Uh, let's, let's go in uh, one by one on each of the definitions. The most important first definition that we want to do is active users. Right. This could be your hourly active users, daily active users, weekly active users, or monthly active users. Right. Again, very dependent on the type of product that you have. But let's first define what is an active user. An active user who is someone who comes to your product and does something important, does an action which you genuinely care about. Now, most standard acceptable practices sort of call active users as somebody, especially if you have an app, is somebody who opens up your app or somebody who visits your web page, right? Nobody really is talking about whether they're doing any activity on the web page or inside your app or not, uh, but just the fact that they are showing up, that they showed some intent to use your app. And that's what's called active users. And in any given period of time, you look at the unique number of users who opened up the app or who, who went to your web page and sort of call them your daily active users if it's for a 24 hour period or monthly active users if it's a period of one month. The problem with this metric is that it doesn't really tell you if the users are doing anything relevant in your product. So while you capture this as your daily active user base, depending on the type of product you have and the type of metric that is relevant to you, please make sure that you track that as well. So if you were running a video app, you would say that the most important action is that somebody started playing a video. So you would call your activity here is the fact that somebody started a video. So you would measure DVV, daily video viewers, right? So your DAU could be 100, but your DVV could be 85, which is only 85 people searched for a video and then actually started playing a video. If you were a payments app or a transaction-based app, you would have your DAU, which is the number of people who opened your product. So 500 people opened the product today, but only 270 of them actually did a transaction. So you would measure your DTU, daily transacting users. Right? So the unique number of users in that day who transacted. If you were an e-commerce product, you could say my MAU is 50 million, but 29 million people bought at least one product. So monthly transacting users or monthly purchasers was 29 million, right? So Active users came and opened your product, but more importantly, make sure that you measure a specific activity which is relevant to your product. The question most often on people's mind is, what if there are two or three different things in my product which are useful? What if my product is a marketplace? Or what if I'm a product like a social product like Twitter, right? Would you count daily tweeting users or daily users who read tweets or daily users who engage with tweets or how many tweets somebody has seen, right? Again, you could measure it in different ways and you could probably have both the supply side and the demand side on this. Uh, daily tweeting users, so any user who's put out a piece of content uh, would be one measure, but consuming content is also very relevant to your product. So first scroll could be a activity that you measure, right? So again, depends very much on your type of, the type of product that you have, but please make sure that along with along with measuring app opens, you also measure the most important, the most relevant activity to you, right? Next up, uh, we talk about engagement and engagement essentially is a form of stickiness. It's a way of measuring frequency. So within a given period of time, say within a day, how often did the user come to your product or how much time the user spent in your product? In a month, on how many distinct days did the user show up? So if your product has 100, 100 million monthly active users, but your DAU, your daily active user base is 50, your engagement is 50 by 100. What that means is that on an average, users show up 15 days out of a month. So 15 by 30 is your engagement, right? So when people say my monthly engagement is 50%, what they mean is that the same user turns up for half the month in a complete month, which means a user turns up for 15 days out of a month. Engagement is very, very relevant to measure 
how often people come to your product and how sticky they are with your product, right? The next bit is retention. Now, retention is of different types. You have new user retention and returning user reten retention. Let's, let's focus on new user retention. Suppose 100 people installed my brand new app today and they opened the app today. So today is day zero. On day zero, my retention is 100%. Of these 100 people, how many turned to the came back to the app and opened the app tomorrow? So suppose out of these 100 people, 50 people came back and opened the app tomorrow. So my D1 retention, so from D0 to D1, my retention has gone from 100% to 50%. So my D1 retention would be 50%. My D7 is probably 15. That means only 15 out of the 100 people who installed my product came back to the product after a week. And it doesn't mean that other 85 will not come back. It just means that a week later, only 15 turned up. Now, in a lot of products, you would measure D1, D7, D30. In a lot of cases, you would measure week over week retention. So W0, W1, W2. And sometimes in, 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 in social products, for example, you also measure month over month retention because you want the lifetime of the user to be much, much longer in your product. So you measure month over month retention. But what about users who install the app tomorrow? And this is where the concept of cohorts comes in. So all the people who installed the app today, what was their D1 retention? Then all the people who install the app tomorrow, what was their D1 retention? So for them, D0 would be tomorrow and D1 would be day after tomorrow. So a cohort essentially looks at people who are part of the same group, who did the same set of actions on a particular day or in a given set of circumstances, right? In retention, it is very, very critical that we measure cohorts and we actually see what changes by cohorts. So suppose you have a weekly release cycle in your product and you launch new features and new uh, new attributes, uh, new, new user-facing features in your product. How do you know that some of these things are working? So what you would see is that you would see the week over week retention curves of different cohorts, people who installed your app two, three months back, so almost 12 weeks back, what is their week over week retention? Then you, you added new features to your product last month. The new users coming in at that time must have a very different retention curve. And then you installed new, uh, you, you uh, added new sets of features now. How has the retention changed for those users? So essentially cohort analysis of retention is what tells you that whether things are working or not. So let's look, let's look at a few examples. Just so that everyone is clear, I think that the just from an English language perspective, from a semantics perspective, a lot of people confuse engagement and retention. They sound almost similar. But when it comes to metrics, these are two very distinct terms. They are correlated, but there is no causation between the two. And this is very important to understand, right? Engagement is measured in one period of time. So how often an activity is repeated in a given period of time, right? Whereas retention talks about the same length of time period. So day over day over day or week over week over week. You showed up in week zero. Did you show up in week one? And did you show up in week two? Right, and this bit is very, very critical. So retention measures how often you come back, how frequently you come back to the product over a series of steps of time, which are of similar length. Whereas engagement measures how frequently you came to the product in a given period of time. Now, why am I saying that they are correlated, but there is no causation? Let's take a AAA console game, right? My favorite example is God of War. Now you buy a new God of War, you put in, in on, on, on your Sony PlayStation and you start playing. You really enjoy the game. So you start playing the game on a Friday. You spend about 10, 15 hours uh, and you, you get through a bunch of levels. Then you wake up on Saturday and you start playing the game again and you pretty much play all of Saturday uh, and, you know, late into Saturday night and probably into early Sunday morning. You continue playing on Sunday. You actually take Monday off so that you can finish the game. And at the end of this period, you realize that you have about 60 hours of gameplay time, right, over a four-day period, and you've played the game. You've sort of finished the game end to end. Now, what can we say about the engagement and retention of this user? From an engagement perspective, over this four-day period, your short-term engagement was crazy. In a day, you were playing 16 hours out of 24 hours, right? You were showing up in this product incredibly often. Over that three or four day period, you showed up every single day. So your retention, your D1 retention was 100%, your D2 retention was 100%, your D3 retention was 100%. What happens on Tuesday? 
Suppose you don't turn up on Tuesday. Now your D4 retention has fallen down to zero, right? So short-term engagement and retention while are connected are not really connected. Now what happens? Does this extremely high short-term engagement lead to long-term retention? The answer is no. You are not going to be playing this game week over week, month over month. But here's the interesting part. You might have played God of War 1 and then you might have played God of War 2 and God of War 3. I would argue that your year-over-year -year retention with this franchise is incredibly high. Over the last 10-12 years, you might have played every one of these games and you might have played these games across different consoles. Now, this is a critical part. When, so for a product like God of War, the developers are trying to see that their audience is maintained year over year over different versions of the product, right? So while these are not products that you play daily, this is not like PUBG. It's not that you spend 15 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes, two hours every day playing this game and you play four times a week. So your weekly engagement would be four by seven. So you show up as DAU on four days out of seven days. And your week-over-week -week retention is incredibly high and your month-over-month -month retention is very high. That is a very different product than a AAA console game which you play for a limited period of time and then you're done. And then maybe you replay it after a few months at a different difficulty level. Or then maybe you play its sequel after a few years. So the way you would measure engagement and retention is very different. Now, the reason I'm trying to make this point is that a lot of people look at publicly available benchmarks of other products. You know, you look at, say, Facebook's monthly engagement, which is bonkers, right? Like their DAU by MAU is of the order of 80%, which means users turn up 24, 24 days out of a month. So essentially, 24 by 30 would lead to an 80% engagement, right? And then people try and see that, hey, why is my B2B SaaS product? It doesn't have the same engagement. Or, you know, Facebook users have a lifetime, which goes into years. Why does my product not have the same lifetime? And again, please always compare apples to apples. Compare your product to other products in the market which are similar, right? Don't get uh, caught up in the fact that there are other products which have much better D1 retention or much better week-over-week -week retention or their monthly engagement is much higher than your product, right? Um, think about it. During the pandemic, we've completely stopped using Google Maps, right? Because I wasn't traveling. I personally did not use Google Maps or maybe a six-month period. Right. But when I was working and when I used to drive around and when I used to go to different parts of, of the city, if not every day, at least every other day, I was using uh, Google Maps. Right. So my weekly engagement was very high. It was 50 percent, which means I used Google Maps at least three to four days out of a week. And my monthly engagement also was probably something like 15, 16 days out of a month. And my month over month retention was 100 percent. Right. Because of the pandemic, it completely fell down to a very, very small number. So remember that. The way you engage with a product, right? Google search is something you might engage with on a day-to-day -day basis. But say the Practo app, which you use to you know, book your doctor's appointment, you only do it when you fall sick, right? So you, your engagement is probably like you use it twice a year. So you show up on two days or three days out of a year. If you, know, you don't have young kids in your family or you don't have to take care of older parents, it's possible that you're not booking very regular appointments. Right. So your engagement and your month over month retention would be very different in a product like that. And you'd use it once in a while. So now if you were sitting at Practo and you were trying to say that, hey, my D1 retention should be 80 percent or 60 percent or 50 percent or my monthly engagement should be 24 days out of a month. That's not true because nobody's going to be coming back to your product 24 days out of a month uh, to book doctor's appointments. Perhaps they would come in for something else. So maybe you have you have great content and maybe you have uh, you do online consultations and maybe people can order medicines. So hopefully you have a diverse set of use cases in your product, which might increase your engagement. But if your primary use case was booking consultations with doctors, that's not something that you would do on a day to day basis. So it's very important to understand the difference between the two uh, and understand which metric you should be thinking about optimizing. What you're going to do quickly now is look through a few retention curves and just to sort of give you a sense of what essentially happens, uh, right? Uh, so some example graphs. Let's look at just DAU, right? Active users across an hour, across a day, right? And what I've done here is, you know, we are trying to compare today to yesterday to last week. And the reason you want to compare these numbers to previous days is because you wouldn't know if your DAU is actually good or bad on any given day. So the line in black shows us today's DAU. It's a cumulative graph. It's growing. But clearly, 
Last week, the DAU was much better. So last Tuesday, this DAU was much better. And yesterday was lower. So Monday's DAU was lower. So if today's Tuesday, we have a certain DAU today. Yesterday, our DAU growth was lesser. But last week on Tuesday, our DAU growth was higher. So at least you can look at this curve and sort of try and figure out something that, hey, Tuesdays are better than Mondays, but this Tuesday doesn't happen to be as good as the previous Tuesday. What's causing that downfall? Was I running a campaign last Tuesday? Were more users using my product last Tuesday? Uh, was there any other sale going on in my e-commerce product because of which more users were coming in R over R? So something for you to think about as you look at your metrics. This is a very classic cohort-based graph, right? And it, it shows sort of D0 to D7 retention across different cohorts. So it clearly shows that on August 30th, 32K new people, 32.9K new people installed your product. So their D0 retention is 100%. Of them, 31% turned up on day one and 26% turned up on day two and so on, right? And then you compare it to the people who installed the app on August 31st, which is about 20,000 people and in September. What you can clearly see is that our D1 retention seems to have taken a hit over the last few days, right? But so has our D2 and other retention. So our retention is falling, which is not a good sign, which means whatever we are doing is not working. And our day over day retention for new users is, is not up to the mark, right? Uh, this is a typical sort of retention curves and the reason you sort of look at cohorts, but this is a way for you to understand good retention versus bad retention. Bad retention is what this gray curve looks like, right? It's constantly declining until eventually go down to zero, right? A flattening curve is the orange curve that, you know, there is a precipitous drop, right, from, say, day zero to day one and day two, but then it stabilizes, which means people keep coming back to your product day over day. So a lot of users don't find any value in your product, but the users who find value in your product find value in your product on a day-to-day -day basis and keep coming back to your product. What you ideally like is the smiling curve, which is that there is a dip and then it stabilizes and then it slowly over time starts going up, which means more and more people who install your app find value in the app over time and keep coming back day over day, All right? And this is, this is essentially sort of, again, uh, another sort of representation of this is good retention versus bad retention. In bad retention, precipitous fall and then continue sliding down. Good retention, there is a bit of a fall you stabilize and then it sort of stabilizes and ideally should grow in what I call this beautiful smile curve, the power user curve, right? Um, which is that yes, your retention falls over time, but then it starts picking up and users start finding value in your product and keep coming back, right? And this, this, is, this is the smile curve, this lopsided smile, uh, the joker smile, I call it, it, is what you are essentially looking for. Uh, as signs of life in your retention. If this is happening in your product, it's a great sign. Now, this might not be happening in your day-over-day -day retention curve, and it might be happening in your week-over-week -week retention curve or month-over-month -month retention curve. And this is very dependent on the type of product you have, right? So don't fall, uh, don't sort of falter yourself, fault yourself for the fact that your product doesn't seem to have a day-over-day -day smile curve because it's very likely that your product is not a daily use product. So figure out the actual frequency, the ideal use case of your product and build, build your graphs and sort of do your analysis based on that. What kind of retention is ideal retention for your product? What kind of engagement is ideal engagement for your product? And then build out these graphs, right? Uh, so I think this is it. Uh, this, was, this is the playbook on metrics with a focus on engagement and retention. There are tens of thousands of different metrics that we could look at, but for most products, your active user base, your engagement, your retention. These are the three sort of uh, things that you look at and then split them by cohort. And that's how you sort of analyze and look at your metrics, right? So hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, do subscribe to the channel for more such videos. And uh, yeah, see you soon on the next video. Take care.